of 2009, and this is the repeated kind of trending. You will see this happening all the time. And what I am saying, in fact, I was just talking to Vishal in the next slide. Uh, the security challenge today for any CISO or CIO is to manage cost, ensure that the complexity is decreased, and you work in tandem with business. You don't make life for business difficult. Improve effectiveness and ensure that there is an agility because security also has a kind of a deleterious impact on the agility with the passage of time. That's what this graph shows. Now, having said that, uh, uh, I was just talking to Vishal in the break that the online fraud today has become much easier than it was years ago or many years ago or five years ago, whatever time frame you want to take. Because we think that the technology has evolved and developed and everything is fine, but the hacker's mind works at the fastest pace than possibly a technologist or a security person would think about it. And when we talk specifically about uh, uh, the credit card the breaches, uh, which possibly you would not hear many times in India, because in India nothing gets reported. That's a sad part of our country. Whereas in the U.S., it is mandatory to report. And some of those I have listed, one of them, the most recent one is the Heartland system, uh, where the headquarters is in Princeton, New Jersey, which is where I live. Uh, the malware uh, was installed on one of the Heartland uh, payment system gateway. And more than 46 million credit card holders' data, credit and debit card holders' data was breached. And this has gone into a major lawsuit now. And I would not name, though they were PCI DSS compliant, I would not name who was the, you know, the QSA. They have been regularly assessed by a uh, qualified security assessor. But despite that, this has happened. Another example, one of the largest uh, credit card breaches which has happened also in 2007-2008 of a company, a large retailer called TJ Maxx. I don't know how many of you have heard about it now. But they operate more than 3,000 stores across the U.S. under the brand name TJ Maxx, Marshall and Ross. Then they, this has happened to, you know, the data which was transferred, which is supposed to be transferred over the net, has to be encrypted. And this was not being done. And the company, there was a major lawsuit filed in the Massachusetts Bankers Association, and now out of court settlement has taken place. So those kind of stories uh, you will keep hearing all the time. And the reason is that, as I have said, that this is something which everyone would like to see. <laughs> now, this is from cartoon.com, and as you know, that you can do this just easily online. Why do you need to go to the bank and, you know, rob the bank? You can just do, you know, through the Internet. And if you see Verizon Business Report of April 15, 2009, <laughs> the maximum electronic records were breached in 2008 uh, as compared to previous four years, right from 2004 till 2007. So if you see this kind of statistics, you will start wondering India is a heaven, which actually is not the case. It is no. So the reason we think that India is heaven because there is nothing which gets reported in public, whereas if you are in the U.S., and especially a place like California, where there is special directive 1386, which makes it mandatory for every company to report how these breaches have taken place and what would happen. Now, uh, let me just give you quickly the history, and I'm going to go through some of the slides very quickly. So you can stop me in case you have any doubts, or we can take up the questions in Q&A session. Uh, this was basically a standard which has evolved out of the major card brands, namely Visa, MasterCard, MX, and JCB. Uh, JCB and Discover. Discover and JCB you won't hear much in India, but they're very specific to US and Japan. Um, uh, but if you, you may hear about Visa, MasterCard, and MX all the time. So they came together and then they came out with the, the individually, initially they had their own standards. Uh, but they came together in 2006 and came out with a standard which has become what is called as payment card industry data security standard. Today we have version 1.2 which is released in October 2008. So any, any merchant or any service provider who has to go for the compliance to PCI DSA, they have to get complied with 1.2 version. And as I have mentioned in my slide, it is mandatory. It's not like ISO 27001. And then the question which comes up all the time, that if you are ISO 27001 certified, I'm sure many of you are, does not necessarily give you a blanket visa to get into the system and proclaim that you are also certified to PCI DSS. No. And vice versa. 
If your PCI DSS certified does not necessarily mean that you all also meet, you will meet most of the requirements, but does not mean that you are also compliant to ISO 27001. Okay? There are three standards we are going to look into. Most important is PCI DSS. There is something called as a PA DSS, which is Payment Application Data Security Standard, that is meant for those people who have who are making those payment applications, like payment gateways which the banks use or the service providers or the merchants use, etc. That is applicable to them. And PCI PED, which is pin entry devices, which is at the point of sales, which is used by retailers and the merchants, that is also some of the um, things which you need to take into account, and also the manufacturers of those devices. But the most commonly used today for the purpose of this, this today's discussion, we are going to focus on PCI DSS. And this is some of the terminology just to get you acclimatized with that. You have different stakeholders who are part of this particular standard called merchants, then acquirers, you have a payment brand networks which I already told you, and issuers of the card, like the bank, HDFC issues card, debit and credit card. Again, PCI DSS is also applicable for debit cards. It's not just a credit card. The name may suggest credit card industry data security standard, but debit card, if issued by Visa or MasterCard or American Express, American Express hardly issues those debit cards, but yes, and, uh, Visa and MasterCard debit cards most likely, or not most likely, uh, obviously have to comply with uh, PCI DSS requirements. And when you talk about service providers, companies such as IBM or you know, who, uh, or any of the SIs or any of the telco companies or ISPs, those are part of the service providers network. This I have already told you how we have uh, gone into this. This is an important slide which are basically there are six areas or 12 domains of the PCI DSS requirements and if you see, uh, you can go to the PCI DSS website and get this standard free. It's freely downloadable and you can go through this but when you look into this, it sounds pretty simple. Nothing great about it because any security professional possibly has all this. Companies who have a very robust security policy, security processes, procedures, etc., they claim that they are compliant to PCI DSS. But when we actually go and do gap assessments or the certifications, that's where we come to know that the gap is so huge, they, I think they need to rework most of the thing. And that is where I am trying to tell you that the requirements don't look simple if you deep dive into it and look into the integrity at the micro level, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty tough standard. Uh, not just to comply with it, but also from implementation, maintaining it and ensuring that, you know, the risk is minimized from the threat perspective. And I gave you an example uh, of Heartland Systems, which was compliant to PCI DSS, but still the breach happened. So it, this is not a guarantee, because nothing is guaranteed in this world, that if you are compliant to PCI DSS, the credit card breach would not happen. Effectiveness is very critical towards implementation and how effectively you are monitoring the entire network, entire system where the credit card information, uh, credit card holders information is stored. This is applied to all the stores or the, you know, retailers, merchants, etc. All the stakeholders we have seen, it applies to various industries which are listed right from retail to banking, financial services, energy, oil, healthcare, wherever the credit card or debit card transactions are taking place, this standard is applicable. There are three components, compliance, validations and reporting. Uh, I don't need to get into details, but you all of you know that what uh, it means. It is uh, definitely, once you have uh, deployed, it has to be validated by a third party or, or self-declaration in terms of the self-assessment you have to ensure depending on the level you have, which I will cover in a few minutes. These are quickly the benefits. Um, I mean, this is all part everyone